Thanks for watching and let's calculate the area of a Neumann oval. What is the Neumann oval you may ask? Well, here's a picture. And really what it is, it's the image of the unit disk D under the mapping f of z equals z plus z squared over 2. So if you start with the unit disk and you apply this function to it, then you get the Neumann oval, which suggests to calculate this area, we just need to use some multivariable techniques. More precisely, the area. All it is, it's the double integral of the function 1 over the Neumann oval with respect to the complex variable w, but by change of variables, this is the same thing as the double integral over the unit disk of the same function 1 times the Jacobian. But it turns out, if you have a holomorphic function from one to the other, then the Jacobian is just the length of the derivative squared. So absolute value of f prime z squared with respect to the variable z. And this really cool fact I will show at the end. But for right now, let's do the cooler thing, which is to calculate the area. So let's calculate the double integral of the absolute value of the derivative squared, where here we have a function. Well, if f of z is that, then f prime of z by the power rule is just 1 plus z. But z is just x plus iy, so it's 1 plus x plus iy. And therefore, the modulus squared is just the real part squared. So 1 plus x squared plus the imaginary part squared. And this we can just expand out. So this will be x squared plus y squared plus 2x plus 1. And well, because we have x squared plus y squared, this is very suggestive to use polar coordinates. So in polar coordinates, this just becomes r squared plus 2r cosine theta plus 1. So all we need to do is integrate this function with polar coordinates. And therefore, since we have the unit disk, this is just the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 1 of this function, r squared plus 2r cosine theta plus 1, times our polar thing, which is r d r d theta. And well, this simplifies quite nicely. More precisely, here the r's sort of come out. And if you integrate cosine from 0 to 2 pi, you just get 0. In other words, the middle term is just 0. And you just need to integrate a bunch of r's. So what you get is the following. Well, there's no more theta here, so it's just 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1, r squared times r, that's r cubed, 1 times r, that's r, the r. And an antiderivative of r cubed is r to the fourth over 4. So we get 1 fourth r squared over 2. That gives us 1 half. And then 1 fourth times 1 half, that is 3 quarters. So in the end, the area of the Neumann oval is just 3 pi over 2. How neat is that? And this is just based on the Jacobian formula, which I'll derive now. So how come when, if you start with the region D in terms of 
let's say variables x, y, and you apply f to it to get a region d prime in terms of u, v. How come in that case the Jacobian is just absolute value of f prime squared? Well, this has to do with some basic complex analysis because the Jacobian is just a determinant of the derivative matrix. So df, but if f is uv, then df is just ux, uy, vx, vy. So in general, the Jacobian is just ux, vy minus uy vx. In general, this is just gibberish. But remember, if you actually have a holomorphic function, then the real imaginary parts satisfy what are called the Cauchy-Riemann equations. And in particular, vy, that is the same thing as ux. So ux, ux. And vx is minus uy, so you end up getting plus uy, uy. And therefore, the Jacobian is just ux squared plus uy squared. But if a function is complex differentiable, then in fact, this is just another way of writing the derivative squared. So absolute value of f prime of z squared. I think just if you take the derivative with respect to the real line or something. And therefore, this is the Jacobian, so a formula is valued, and we were able to calculate the area of a Neumann oval. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.